Political comedy has become a staple of late night television in the beginning of the 21st century. Many turn to shows such as The Daily Show with Trevor Noah and Real Time with Bill Maher for information as well as entertainment. The Pew Research Center published a study in February of 2016 that showed that 25% of U.S. adults had obtained some information about the 2016 election from a late night comedy show. 3% listed late night comedy as most helpful, about as much as print newspapers. Originally airing in 1996, The Daily Show has been one of America's most watched late night shows. The Daily Show currently hosts one particularly popular segment, Jordan Klepper Fingers the Pulse, which garners millions of views on YouTube alone. In October, Klepper attended a rally for Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, where he interviewed Trump supporters, such as this one, about Donald Trump's locker room talk. People here knew Trump's comments weren't sexual assault, they were something completely different. Just ask this man who conducted a highly scientific survey. I got news for you, I asked a lot of women here, and half of them would love to have their pussy snatched by, by Trump. I got news for you. Mm -hmm. That is news to me. I'd like to grab Al Qaeda by the pussy and shove some Yankee Doodle Dandy right up its ass. But we at the transcript noticed something a bit odd about this particular Trump supporter. You supporting Jill Stein. Oh yeah, that's a logical conclusion. With all these <laughs> buttons. Yes, I am. How many events of Jill Stein's have you been to? Not many this year, probably seven or eight. So who really is this man? The Trump supporter on The Daily Show or the button-selling Jill Stein enthusiast? I interviewed him and found out. Oh, that was a trip. I got to yeah. say, that was, that was different. Well, I'm Bennett Weiss, and I live in beautiful Newburgh, New York. You never supported Donald Trump? Absolutely throughout. not. When Bernie uh, lost, uh, Jill Stein uh, seemed to me to be the logical go-to person. One of my main modus operandi of campaigning, and I've been campaigning for many years, is buttons. I make and sell buttons. My son uh, was uh, interested in following in my footsteps to some extent. He really disappointed me when he told me that he was going to uh, do buttons at a Donald Trump rally in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So I figured, let me go out there and, uh, and, and just walk around. It was, but I was interested in listening to the conversations on the line. I wanted to chime in, but I was self-conscious because I didn't want to be seen as an intruder. I didn't, I wanted to sort of blend in with him. So I went back to my son's display. I took a couple of buttons and went about my business. I heard one particular group talking about uh, Muslims and how, you know, hey, we're finally going to do something about it. I figured, okay, that, this was my chance to, you know, join the conversation. So I, I, I told the guy something like, uh, excuse me for interrupting, uh, but I happen to agree with you completely. Anyway, while I'm doing my shtick with these, with these Trump supporters, the guy comes up to me with a clipboard. It says, excuse me, would you like to be interviewed? My newfound Trump buddies pat me on the back, and they say, yeah, yeah, go for it, go ahead, yeah, do it. I saw the guy, recognized him, so I said, uh-oh, Daily Show. All kinds of bells went off in my head. So do you think at any point Jordan Klepper or The Daily Show knew that you weren't yes, a real Trump supporter? Yes, absolutely. I, I got my Trump friends with me there, so I have to sort of stay in character. Good guy on my shoulder saying, don't do this, but the devil on my own. It's fun. Go ahead. It's going to be fun. And I like fun. So I figured, what the hell, I'll have some fun, right? But I still think that that type of what I did was part of a real serious problem. It's all designed to, you know, to, to convey a message, to get across a point. The point being Trump supporters are stupid, laughable, and we're so above them. Even, even these people that I ran into there who were um, of the caricature that I you know, portrayed, even people like that, they, underneath it all, they had stories to tell. When we confuse, you know, uh, TV with reality, and on a show like that, it's especially uh, egregious because you see, it, there's a double le level here. It's like, okay, you, everyone sort of knows who's watching it that they're they have a bias and that their real objective is is laughs, not mm -hmm. news. Okay, but there's also 
a subconscious level where this is news to these people. This is what they're, this is what's in their head now. Would I do it again? I'm going to say I'll take the fifth on that. <laughs> Bennett Weiss's story raises some important issues. Where is the line between comedy and journalism? What obligation do comedic outlets have to follow rules of journalistic ethics, such as vetting their sources? As we enter a new era of rampant mistrust of journalists, these questions should be on everyone's mind. <laughs>